It has been a good period of time. Eons. Since you have last seen It's been four us. scores and seven years ago since they last seen us. And a half. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we have... Nothing new to update. <laughs> We're just here to hang out with our friends on the internet. Yet, because coincidentally, of, oh, shit, okay. we have a laptop to update. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. What do because we have to update? In the meantime, since we've been gone. Yeah. Since you've been gone. We've been making some perfumes. Ah! Yeah. Okay. So we made yeah. some perfumes for um, a small independent company. Mm-hmm. Which just so happened to coincide with the epoch of tons of YouTubers, YouTube fragcom people making their own perfumes and then, uh, or stepping up as brand ambassadors for mm -hmm. perfumes. Um, which is not to say that we necessarily think anything badly of these people, but a lot of times uh, there are people who have propped themselves up in a position running the YouTube channel as if it was a business and then pursuing fragrance again as if it was a business. Not really, um, not really for the love of what they're doing or for the community or for anything like that, but really they, you know, saw a market opportunity. Perhaps it started out as a love, and then it became a market opportunity, and then, you you know, they grew it. But we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, and that doesn't necessarily denote even a bad perfume. They could be making magnificent perfumes, and they being anybody. There are some who are 100% without a doubt coming from a place of love, doing something amazing for the community, for themselves. And it's not wrong to make a profit. That's not what we're saying either, but... Nevertheless, uh, it's a long way of saying we, we made some perfumes. Um, it was a very um, interesting process that we learned taught us a lot. A lot. Um, we are now in the process of working to create perfumes for ourselves, no longer in the service of another um, business. Uh, we are learning. We are learning a, a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, that's but been a trend. That's been a big trend. That's been a big trend. And you can notice from watching this channel, I mean, our channel has basically yeah. been about growth. Oh my gosh, if you go and want to cringe, feel free to watch some of our earlier videos. Yeah. It's great. But it's, I think... I mean, it does show, like, growth in understanding uh, perfumes and their nature, as well as understanding notes, and just... Um, also, the amount of work we had to put in to no longer just be able to go to, I mean, you know, to be frank, just go to the mall and see what the mall has and smell what they have, but having to understand that we had to travel to different states to smell things. Um, this past year, we went to New York, New York City, and that was like a huge experience for us that we had to smell a lot of things that, you know without having to buy samples, which we have boatloads of sample vials all over the house. The cats love them. Um, <laughs> and coincidentally also, we at that point seem to have pretty much exhausted options for even New York. That's so. true. I know, but still, I mean, yeah. we still had to go there to smell things that we were never no, going to be able to doubt. smell. without a doubt. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Oh yeah, we were learning. A lot. We're learning a lot. We have been for the past however many years we've been doing this. I've lost count. And I think that's one of the awesome things about um, the YouTube portion of the community or Base Notes or Fragranica or whatever it is, is that nobody in the community, nobody even outside of the community, nobody a part of the perfume world is so wise that they could not learn something from somebody else. And it really, I mean, that's what people have, at least since our participation in the small corner of the community that we are in, that's what people have always been there for us to do. Yeah. And that's what we've always done with other people is, you know, sharing knowledge. I mean, it's basically, it's interesting because unlike most art forms, this art form you'll actually have to necessarily pay something to, to join, to understand, like, to begin working with. But 
it's almost as if the knowledge is open access. Like, the, it's usually inverted. Like, painting, you can go to most museums for free or for very small admittance fee, but usually it's free, and you can observe art. But then the, the tomes, the art tomes, uh, where knowledge is distributed become very costly, and it becomes like you know, almost a specialized set of knowledge that you can't really gain access to without without money. Mula. But anyways, all of this is to say that... We're very long-winded. We're very long-winded people. Yep. And, and I have short hair. And we're still growing. Yeah. And this is, I think, the fourth, maybe the fifth... I don't, I don't I remember, know. honestly. I think this is the fourth collection video. I think it is the fourth. But with this collection video uh, comes also the understanding that the collection itself is going to be somewhat put on hold indefinitely with the exception of a few perfumers that I love, uh, around six perfumers that I love. Mm -hmm. You know, if they release new stuff, more than likely I'll, I'll buy it. But outside of that, at least for right now, while we're really getting our solid footing in, in making you know, our own stuff, making our own stuff, with uh, you know the whole process itself being costly, but also you know not trying to skimp out on any ingredient that becomes <laughs> a collection in of itself. That's and just it's daunting. Like we we yeah. thought we we knew what we were getting into, and two weeks later we're like just kidding. We know nothing. Yeah. So. But, yeah. I mean, really, if you look at the people in the community who are really generating the most interesting, worthwhile stuff, they are all self-taught perfumers, or most of them are self-taught perfumers, and they're doing what everybody else in this community has the possibility to do. Um, it's like... I mean, it's like we've reached a really great point with perfumery where this is a possibility for anybody. And really, as long as you're willing to put in the effort and the dedication and you're willing to be open and habitually humble uh, enough to be learning, it's there for you. It's awesome. It's amazing. Stay humble, hustle hard. I hate that so <laughs> much. I hate that that just happened. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, we're going to show you the collection uh tell us in the comments if there's anything in particular you want us to try to review sooner rather than later because or otherwise talk about. yeah or bring back our jalapeno video yeah i don't want to bring back the jalapeno video she wants habanero this time actually <laughs> don't even tempt the she universe. wants ghost ghost peppers she wants i would literally be dead scorpion on the floor. peppers we need them <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, let us know, because yeah. uh, we're just going to pretty much be reviewing stuff that we think is fun, but uh, obviously we love it because it's in the collection, at which we have called, like, a thousand fucking times at this point. So, yeah, just let us know. Otherwise, welcome, welcome back into our lives. Yeah. We have changed couches. We have, and locations. We haven't changed cats, though, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Well, um, we'll see ya. In the flippity flu. Flippity flu. Okay, so first things first, we have got Zoologist Beaver. This is the reformulated edition, uh, which the original is great. I uh, just didn't have a chance to get it. It's a uh, summery aquatic -y musk, which, uh, uh, I don't know that it smells super animalic-y, but it does kind of smell a little bit like a zoo, which is cool. We have got, uh, So Oud Noor O Fine. This is like peach and suede. Um, over here we've got Zarjoth 1861 Renaissance. This is a really nice white floral, mugat um, uh, mint fragrance. We've got, uh, Mask. Milano La Tassa, La Tessa, which is uh, basically orris root. It's supposed to smell like orris and champagne and leather. Uh, it is very uh, bitter and uh, smells like a really nice orris fragrance. Um, Serjoff's Neo, the old school bottle. This is, of course, the uh, Bergamot King. 
Uh, we have got Amouage, the uh, non-magnetic non reflection man here. This is just a really nice Neroli summery fragrance. Almost out of that guy. We've got MDCI's Invasion Barbare. Uh, this is uh, a cardamom and lavender. It's uh, supposed to be like a barbershop fougere on crack. And then we've got uh, then we've got some Coronation Ambergris, uh, little one mil duders right there. Moving on down, we've got our Trefo Pur Atelier Cologne miniature dude, like 15 ml. Little feller, you can see there's a lot of the juice left in there. That's a really classic uh, men's eau de cologne with uh, orange in it. It's like Hermes' uh, eau de orange, I think. I think that's what it's called. Um, but uh, just with the classic uh, traditional eau de cologne uh, base, which I like a lot better, honestly, but it doesn't last worth shit. Um, this is, of course, uh, Perinala by Slumberhouse, which smells like olive oil with pear juice in it. Pretty badass. We've got our uh, Rubge. Rubge. Look at that. Rubge. Uh, this is from Vero Profumo. Uh, this is the uh, Voile de Exolate. Um, it smells kind of like plastic and flowers. Which is kind of cool. Um, there's very little juice on in there. But uh, this guy is discontinued um, as um, she passed away, which is very unfortunate, but uh, she will surely be remembered in the community for being the legend that she was. We've got Zoologist Dodo. Apparently this is not beloved by uh, a great deal many, um, according to Victor. Uh, apparently Middle Eastern folks like it, and me. Uh, it smells like the aviation, or av the Avery. Aviary, aviary, there it is, aviary house at the zoo. It kind of smells like a chicken coop, but uh, very green and uh, another brilliant musk from the house. Really love the zoologist musks, the musky smells. It was a great one. This is uh, Parfum Prasanna's uh, Mandarava. There you go. Um, it's like uh, a very custardy floral, uh, kind of, uh, aggressive fragrance. But I really like that a lot. It kind of reminds me of I Love, uh, Ylang Ylang from, um, Bogue, but, uh, I actually like this better, even though it's, uh, more artificial smelling, uh, more synthetic. We've got, uh, Guerlain's Vetiver Extreme out of Toilette. Of course, that is Vetiver, spiced up, uh, just a little bit. We've got uh, Guerlain's Eau de Parfum version of Mitsuko. This is uh, one of the older bottles that still has oak moss in it. Um, oak, moss re oak moss resinoid, I believe. Um, really beautiful stuff. Really beautiful. Uh, Coron Porun Ohm. This is vanilla and lavender. It's badass. Um, and over here we've got a little mini of Andy Towers' Lea du Desert Marocaine. Um, there's a little freebie that came with, uh, an order that we got. Um, uh, really like, uh, this perfume. I like, uh, um, oh shit, what's the other one? Isn't it liqueur? The Desert Moroccan, right? Mm. Isn't that what it is? Mm. Yeah, Cour. Yeah, Al Cour. There it is. Yeah. Du Desert. Yeah, Al Cour Du Desert. I like that a lot better. Um, this one's still really good. Of course, it's OG as hell. Y'all should all know about uh, that guy there. Some nice spices. Spicing it up. We've got uh, another Andy Tower freebie. L'Air uh, de Alpe Suisse. Uh, pardon my horrible French. This is the one fragrance that I uh, do not really care for in my collection. The only fragrance that I'm not in love with. Uh, smells cheap to me. Smells kind of like a Bulgari fragrance that I can't place. Uh, or maybe an air freshener that you would put in your car. We've got uh, Frederick Mall's Portrait of a Lady, uh, the best incense and rose fragrance around. Things of monster, and the dry down is just gorgeous. We've got Hermes's Bellamy. Uh, that is like a sweetened leather fragrance. We've got Zoologist Bat. Uh, 
This is old school. This is just about to be uh, reinterpreted by Prin from, uh, you know, all the different Prin Parfum House, uh, Parfum Prasada, Stranger Perfumes. His version of this is really good. It's a lot more floral, a little uh, minerally. This is like super fucking minimal, minerally, uh, with some uh, synthetic fruit accords in it that are really amazing. Um, done by, of course, the same perfumer uh, from uh, Tropic of Capricorn, Olympic Orchids. This is uh, mango and some white florals and uh, uh, Hyrax, I believe, is in this guy. But it's uh, pretty animalic, pretty fruity. Uh, it's everything that I would want out of a fragrance. It's pretty dope. We've got Guerlain's Heritage Eau de Toilette. Uh, I don't know what to say about this guy. It's uh, amazing. This is a uh, beautiful old school masculine fragrance with uh, like sandalwood, patchouli, and oak moss that pretty much uh, everybody needs in their collection if you like any type of masculine fragrance. We've got uh, Gris Claire from Serge Laton. That's lavender and supposed to be in incense. It's really, it smells like TV static looks and sounds. It's amazing. Uh, we've got. Naomi uh, Goodsirs, Bois de SS. That is Lafroig uh, whiskey in a bottle. It's amazing. It's like smoky, birch, tarry, whiskey y, uh, leathery goodness. I've got a little miniature of Chanel's number 22. This is aldehydes uh, and really creamy uh, florals. Uh, smells super synthetic, of course, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, they're the, uh, they're the OGs. We've got uh, ELDO's Rien. This is uh, Aldehyde's Leather. Um, really loud. Uh, super fucking loud, as a matter of fact. Which is funny because there's an extreme version of this, which you really don't need because this thing is outrageously loud. Um, smells like a, mechanic, a mechanic's workshop. It's amazing. We've got Aqua de Parma's uh, Colonia Assoluta. This is the traditional EDC, you know, Eau de Cologne uh, fragrance, but just with uh, little yellow florals thrown in. It's really nice stuff. Doesn't last at all, but it's amazing. Just like this guy, but this guy lasts a lot, uh, long, a long time on me. This is uh, Hermes Eau de Hermes. This is uh, basically B.O. with some orange spice thrown on top. It's a uh, cumin, uh, and it's uh, great. It smells a little bit like uh, some orange curry. It's awesome. Uh, down here we have got Maison Francis Kirk John's uh, Absolute Port Do you know what that guy is about? It's, uh, some honey. Uh, smells a little vaginal, if you know what I mean. Uh, this is a bit rouge. Eau de Parfum by Guerlain. It's uh, like leather and vanilla and uh, uh, lemon. It's awesome. It's very, very sweet, but. Uh, but very good. It took me a long time to come around to that. Uh, we have got Bogue Mem. This is uh, the best lavender fragrance on planet Earth, in my humble opinion. Uh, well, tied, uh, but but one of the two. This guy is super herbal, uh, super strange. If you know Bogue's perfume, it's uh, it's amazing though. Home run. It's uh, can't say enough good things about that. We've got. Uh, Parfum de Empire's Queer Ottoman, the little sticker comes off of these guys, which is really frustrating, but uh, this is leather and iris, uh, really in terms of like iris, leather perfumes, that guy is everything that you would want. We have got uh, Amouage uh, Maluk, uh, it is Rose and Oud, um, yeah, super traditional Rose and Oud, I can't say enough good things about it. We've got uh, Tribute, which is a nice uh, smoky uh, tobacco-y fragrance, uh, but there is uh, Ensemble by uh, Sultan Pasha, which is this, but uh, but better. A lot better. Um, we have got Ducita's Melody de l'Amour, uh, the best white floral on planet Earth, in my humble opinion. Gardenia and uh, Jasmine and uh, Huberos. That thing is uh, the best. That's amazing. Uh, Bogue Mai, this is an old school Shepra. Uh, just like uh, white florals and um, aldehydes and uh, synthetic civet. Uh, January Perfumes, uh, Bervuvu. I don't think there's an appropriate way to say that. I think uh, he's goofing on us with these names, but uh, Amazing Juice, best uh, cedar fragrance of all time. 
Uh, it's got a lot of henna in it. It's very spicy, very uh, incensey, very good. We've got Zoologist Civet. Uh, smells like the environment of a civet. Uh, it is uh, coffee y and floral. Uh, really amazing Sheepra. New Sheepra. Uh, down below, this is where we're going to get stuck for a little minute, guys. So make yourselves at home, go get some popcorn. We've got uh, Papillon's uh, Salome. This is like uh, the old school Animalics, but amped up. It's like uh, leather and, and civet, uh, boy, and florals. It's just, uh, it's a beast. That thing's amazing. Serves with tons. Uh, Ombre Sultan. This is, uh, in terms of like that, uh, that chewy, resinous uh, amber, that's uh, pretty hard to beat. That's pretty much the best, in my opinion. We have got uh, Christian Dior's Leather Oud. We've still got a massive freaking bottle of this stuff. This is the uh, the older juice before it got reformulated and got uh, kind of weakened. Uh, you know, that is uh, kind of some uh, some musky leather, really stanky stuff, but in a good way. We've got Serres Latans Tuberose Criminal. This is mentholated tuberose. Uh, smells florally, kind of like uh, menthol cigarettes when you first open it up. It's a really, really beautiful tuberose fragrance. It's uh, pretty hard to beat. We've got Guerlain's Derby. This is a classic men's leather. Um, kind of like uh, Aramis um, and... Uh, oh, shoot. One of the Hermes fragrances that I'm uh, misplacing off the top of my head right now. Um, but it's like carnation and leather. Uh, in terms of like old school men's leathers, it's just... It's basically the fucking king. There's really no beating it. If you like leather fragrances, you like old school fragrances. Uh... That's just the way to go. It's a men's sheep breath. It's just amazing. Uh, we've got Zoologist Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, by the amazing uh, uh, perfumer behind Bogue Perfumes. This thing is a uh, Cade monster. Uh, it's really taking me, it took me a long time to, uh, to really just uh, understand every facet of this fragrance. But uh, once I got there, man, I just, I just can't stop wearing it. It's amazing. Uh, we've got Guerlain Songe uh, d'un Bois d'Et. Uh, still can't pronounce that appropriately. That is a, a nether cumin uh, monster. It's leather and cumin. Um, there's really no oud in this fragrance, but uh, a lot of people try to imagine that it's an oud fragrance. Uh, no, it's cumin and leather. It's a really aggressive leather fragrance. It's very, very nice. We've got Fahrenheit's, uh, or Dior's Fahrenheit, classic uh, petroleum, you know, leather and violet. Um, pretty good stuff. Uh, super classic masculines. Uh, we've got Sova by, uh, Slumberhouse. That's that alcoholic, uh, raisin. Uh, really hard to talk about. We've got TRNP's Black Spruce. Oud and Spruce. Uh, then we've got all of our Sultan Pashas. Let's see what we've got here. We've got Arum de Angkor. Uh, it is his Jasmine Oud. Um... Lovely, 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 uh, hard to describe, just, like, monolithic king here, really. Uh, it's a masterpiece. Uh, we have got Le Rayon Vert, uh, one of the best, uh, galbanum fragrances on planet Earth. It's, uh, really a green Sheepra, just kind of, uh, maxed out. You can't get much better than that. We've got Tabac, uh, Grand. This is uh, one of the best tobacco fragrances, just as far as, like, pure, straight tobacco. That thing is uh, on another planet. Uh, we have got Ensemble. We were just talking about this. This thing is uh, Tobacco King, Tobacco and Incense King. That thing is uh, uh, just amazing. I can't tell you enough good things about that. It's uh, one of my favorites. Requiem. Uh, this is uh, one of his oud fragrances. It's a bunch of oud and, and flowers and uh, and herbs and uh, resins. That thing is just a, a monster. Just like Ensar Rose here. One of the best rose fragrances on planet Earth. Um, it's, a, it's a very different rose. It's a very full rose. It's hard to describe. Uh, um, we'll talk about that one more later. Uh, we have got... Equilibre. Oh, what an amazing fragrance. Uh, this thing is like uh, orange blossom and oud. It's like a fresh oud. 
what a uh, what a cool idea, and it it turned out freaking amazing. Uh, let's see, it's more Ensart Rose. What do we have here? This guy is Reeve Narcotique. Oh my gosh, uh, yeah, really beautiful Shebra. Um, it's a very very chewy, animalic y uh, Shebra. Yeah, hard to describe. Beautiful Nankun Kodo. Uh, very spicy incense. Uh, that's probably the best incense fragrance on planet Earth, in my opinion. We've got Nui Perjan. Um, in terms of saffron, there's hardly anything on planet Earth that will smell uh, that exquisite. Uh, I'm kind of running through these fairly quickly here, so we'll pardon my uh, goofy descriptions here. Um, we've got incense uh, Shepra, uh, which is just like the best Shepra I've ever smelled in my entire life. Just like the most pure, chewy uh, oak moss um, with lime up top and some peach. I, I can't tell you how great that fragrance is. Fougere Noir. Um, this thing is just, yeah, exactly like it sounds. It's a traditional men's fougere, but uh, darkened up quite a bit. It's got some uh, some licorice-y, uh, lavender-y goodness. Here's Thebes. Uh, this is Iris and Vetiver. Um, Simply one of the greatest fragrances ever. That thing is that thing is amazing. I can't tell you how great that thing is. This is Etude uh, en Fougere. This is the other greatest la uh, lavender fragrance put right up there with uh, Bogue's Mem. I, again, I can't say enough nice things about it. So that's uh, just amazing. Uh, Alial by Sultan Pasha. Yet again, this is a jasmine. This one is like the sister fragrance to Incense, uh, Shepra. It's uh, just more jasmine-centric. The uh, oak moss and everything is tuned down a little bit. Um, Diwanya. Oh my gosh. Yeah, probably uh, in my top fav three favorite fragrances from Sultan Pasha. It's just a, uh, it's an oud fragrance that's just maxed out. I mean, as far as like, boy, it's hard to describe, but as far as like, Oud centric fragrances. Uh, uh, that thing is just damn near impossible to beat for me. Uh, some more uh, Etude and Fougere. Um, this guy over here is Zakuriat by Sultan Pasha. So, moving down to the very uh, last little row here. Uh, we've got Masculine Pluriel by uh, Maison Francis Kerjon. I love this guy. This guy is uh, my no-brainer. A lot of people say Aventus or whatever is their no-brainer. This thing is my no-brainer. It's just vetiver and lavender. It's uh, kind of like taking a bunch of classic men's perfumes and just shoving them into the same bottle. The thing is just, it's just a no-brainer. Uh, what can you say? Perfect men's perfume. Uh, Mio Fushin, Fushiuni uh, Odor 93. This is Narcissus and Tuberose and Patchouli. Um, yeah, white floral with super heavy patchouli. It's so good. Um, patchouli used to be a really hard note for me, but that thing really started to open my mind up to it. It's pretty synthetic still as well, but uh, what can you say? I, I, I can't I can't stop loving it. Uh, Musk for Him by Narcissus Rodriguez. This is a uh, oil. Um, this is very uh, intense, uh, pretty synthetic still, but as far as violet and like uh, creamy white musks go, that thing uh, is probably not going to be beaten. Uh, anytime soon. This one is Aranyaka. Uh, this is by Prin Parfum. This is uh, goat hair and uh, leather and, and cypriol. Uh, super animalic, super heavy, super dense, uh, but simply one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled. That thing's amazing. Uh, we've got Lalix, Enclay Noir. Uh, I'm sure you've heard everything about this. Uh, Cypress, uh, Isoe Super, and uh, uh, vetiver. It's, uh, dirty but delicious. We've got our busted ass bottle of, uh, La Fille de Berlin, Serge Laton. This thing is, uh, just a really nice herbal, uh, very sweet, uh, rose. We've got Slumberhouse's Norn, uh, a beautiful, beautiful fur fragrance. It's got incense and, and fur, pretty much, uh, um, we've got Smoke for the Soul by Killian. Green tobacco leaf is what they call it at the uh, boutique, and online they try to call it marijuana. It's definitely neither of those things, but uh, it smells like one half of um, Terre de Hermes, uh amped up and greenified a little bit. Um, a lot of people don't like that one. I really like that one. Uh, I think 
Most people are wrong about that one. That one's my underdog, although I don't love it as much as I used to. Uh, you can see why with the rest of the collection, but uh, I still do think it's amazing and worthwhile. And then we've got uh, Old School Body Koros, vintage uh, YSL. You can see the bottle design there. Uh, this thing's really hard to describe. Um, kind of smells like uh, kind of smells like a stale swimming pool or a sauna. It's like eucalyptus and like uh, and resins. It smells uh, like really humid and kind of uh, chemically, but in a really good way. It's very uh, very strange. Uh, but that's the collection, my friends. Uh, let us know what you want to hear about more from this collection, and certainly we will. We will talk about whatever it is that you want to hear. Until next time, which will be much sooner than the last time we said until next time.